On top of the Empire State Building one time, as a guy walked up to me and said, I know who you are. You're the snake man. I recognize that derby. I'm from London, England. I mean, this thing, I would have never dreamed it would have done what it's done. But as it began to do it, I saddled it up. And I twisted his tail and rode it to the moon. People oftentimes say, well, are you crazy? Well, I don't think so. All right, Diablo Blanco, you're going on this load. I think it's just a controlled fear, if you will. I respect snakes, and I sure know what they can do to me. I have the scars to prove it. You know, there's a certain amount of insanity in us all, I guess, and certainly I've exercised my share of insanity. But attention to an egomaniac with an inferiority complex like myself is like a drug. And I mean, when I'm getting that fix of those people in the restaurant who come over to me and ask to take a photograph of that individual that recognizes me and wants to shake my hand, that's my fix. I mean, that is that thing that makes me old, crippled, bald-headed, overweight, bad hands, bad leg, get up every day and go again. This is my 50th year. I started in 1969, so this will be my 50th year of handling snakes. You know, and uh, even though I'm getting a little long in the tooth and I'm a little crippled up, but I'm still doing it. I mean, that's the main thing. As long as I'm still able to suit up and show up, I don't think I'm going to weaken too much. It's still fun and exciting. Maybe a lot of people want to take pictures and you know, talk. Tell me snake stories. I've heard a million snake stories, but you just got to listen to every one and act like that's the first time you ever heard it. I never disappoint the fans. I always make them think that I'm having as much fun as they are, and the truth of the matter is I'm probably having a little bit more. I'm going to unload here first, then they got reserve parking for us back where we were at a while ago. You must be Christian. Yes, sir. Yes, Christian sir. Jackie, baby. To meet you. My pleasure. How are you sir. doing today? I'm the most blessed man I know. Well, good, good. Could I use the restroom first? Yes, sir. Because I've yes, been riding sir. a while. Then we'll we'll get down to business. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. This is a, my wife, Bonnie. Bonnie, pleased to meet you. I'm Jackie Bibby. That's Diane in there. Taking Howdy, ma'am. It's an awesome big deal for the people of our community to have someone like Jackie Bibby, you know, a legend, be able to come and uh, come to just a small little rattlesnake roundup in, in a little town. I mean, there's so many other things that he could be doing that it's amazing that he would even choose to, to come down and help us out and be a part of it. So and, uh, I think we're going to have great turnouts today because he's here. All right, we're just about ready to get our first show of the day underway. So if any of you out there that hadn't got a great place to come up and stand by the pit yet, come on in, join up with us. We're going to show you what happens when you mix rattlesnakes and crazy people. It can be lots of fun. Now, most of us have been bitten at one time or another. You spend a number of years doing these shows, going out in the field hunting rattlesnakes, doing what we do. It's not a question of if you're going to get bit or not. It's a question of when you're going to get bit and how seriously are you going to be bitten. Well, 50 years of experience of handling snakes as a hobby and as a job, I myself have personally received 12 rattlesnake bites that were serious enough to require hospitalization. I've received a bite on this thumb twice. The pad on the thumb has deteriorated as a result of the venom deteriorating tissue. I received a bite on the back of the thumb back here. Two bites on this finger, one on this finger. One in the stomach, another on the leg, this leg, this hand. So I don't know exactly when and where they all happened, but 12 in total. I also lost my leg about seven years ago as a result of a rattlesnake bite. I didn't have enough sense to quit. I just bought a leg and kept on doing it. Obviously, I'm a slow learner and a fast forgetter.
I'm often asked, how is it that I do the stunts that I do with these venomous reptiles and the danger involved in doing it? Knowing and understanding about these animals the way that I do, I know what to expect from them. Can I guarantee that? No, I've never taught a rattlesnake to read a script. Come between his legs. He sure is getting friendly. I much prefer not to get bit there. Or he's not to get bit at all. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. I'm not. God, no. Oh. <laughs> well, that scared me. <laughs> My journey at becoming the Texas Snake Man was not rapid. I mean, I guess like a lot of overnight successes that take 50 years. For a lot of years, the snake stuff was just kind of in the spring for two or three months, and then it was gone, and it was a whole another year before. I got back heavily involved in the sacking contest and going to the roundups and things like that. But after 20 or 30 years of it, people were talking about me for doing it and I was getting a lot of attention, like getting my name in the paper and like those trophies I could show people. I began to realize that anytime I could do something a little bit different, a little out of the ordinary, something nobody else wasn't doing, that would get me a lot of attention. <laughs> The first big show that I got on was the Chevy Chase show. You know, he had that little short-lived talk show out there in Hollywood, and uh, they picked us up at the airport in a limo. We were on the show with Jamie Lee Curtis. You know, so, I mean, boy, you talk about being in my element. I mean, I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. Please welcome Jackie Bibby. So, as I realized that these snakes could be that vehicle for me, I really began to pursue it with a vengeance. And, the more I did it, the better it got. Jackie Bibby, the Rattlesnake Man. If Adam had put the snake in his mouth rather than the apple, we'd still be in the garden. <laughs> I gave him a 10. We got a winner, Jackie, Jimmy, and Vicky. $10,000. I've been married several times, uh, 10 times so far. Some of the women that were in my life I was not legally married to. But here's my contention. If I have a woman that shares my life, my money, and my kids, she's about as much my wife as she can be. If I asked you to name all 10 women, could you do it? Sure. All right. Let's name all 10 women. Started out with Betty Ann. That was Betty number two. After Betty Ann was Judy Kay. After Judy Kay was Connie Sue. After Connie Sue was Betty Lou. After Betty Lou, was Anya. After Anya, Steffi Lynn, Christy, Vicky, and Alyssa. Is that ten? <laughs> it gonna be pretty close. That's that's them. <laughs> you didn't think I could do it, did you? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Yeah, a little more. Oh. Your leg doing all right? Chip, no, it's killing me. Jackie and I became friends when we were both nine years old. And we've remained friends 
for 60 years. Everywhere we went when we were in high school, Jackie would be the center of attention, start telling all these stories. He'd go, ain't that right, Carl? And I'd go, yep, that's right. And then we'd go to the next place. And he'd be telling the story, except it'd get about that much bigger. And he said, ain't that right, Carl? And I go, yep, that's right, Jackie. That's the way it happened. <laughs> and it was just like that. He's always been wanted to be in the limelight and be up front. And I've always been right behind him. Yep. Can I tell a couple of stories about my dad? Yeah, let's go. When back we were there. talking a while ago, that yeah, brought up a there. couple of things. My dad was kind of my hero, and he was well thought of in our community. But there was a lot of secrets that a lot of people didn't know. Because my dad, when he was out in public, he was a happy-go-lucky guy and got along with everybody. And he was good to people. He'd do nearly anything for anybody in the community. And we also owned businesses and. You know, he worked really hard, but a lot of people didn't know he had a drinking problem. He drank, and he also got a lot of pills. He got pills from the family doctor, but he took pills to go to sleep and took pills to get up. And a lot of times he drank late at night when people didn't know about it. And sometimes he'd get drunk and he'd whip the whole family. He'd whip me, he'd whip my mom, and he'd whip my sister. And you know, it was it was pretty ugly sometimes, and it sent me a lot of really mixed emotions because. I remember back then, my dad never whipped me with the belt, or never spanked me with the paddle. He always whipped me with his fist. That's the way he did it. He beat me up. And after he'd beat me up, he'd hold me, tell me he loved me. It made no sense. Didn't matter. No matter what he did, he was my dad, and he was, he did love me. I don't doubt that for a second, but he was rough. He, he didn't, he didn't make it easy. He made it tough on all of us. Damn, he was hard to please. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying most of my life to try to live up to his standards, and I never could get it done. We made many a mile running around this town when I was young. Back off out here a little ways, we can't get real close to it, but it was a kind of above ground irrigation thing. But uh, we used to go skinny dipping in that irrigation thing all the time. There's a free call from Michael Bibby. An offender at Wheeler Unit. This call is being recorded and is subject to monitoring. To accept this free call, press. One, to refuse this free call, press two. Well, thank you for using CenturyLink. You may start the conversation now. Hello. Hello, son. How you doing today? I'm pretty good. How are you? Oh, I tell you, I've missed you horribly, but we're getting by. You know, Carl's yeah. helping me quite a bit. He's kind of had to fill in since you ain't been around. Is everything running all right? Yeah, yeah, I just got back from commissary. Okay, did you get you some goodies? I did, I did. Got your little food stocked up? Yeah. 
Okay, well, you got it better than some. You got a little money on your books anyway. I do, I do. I'm blessed. That's right. Let's just keep that in mind. You know, an attitude of gratitude is going to go a long way. Yes. I'm, I'm going to get out and straighten my life up. I, I know I'm walking a similar road you did, but I'm hoping to straighten up. You will. You're going to find your way. You just got to have that uh, that pop. You know, that pop is that sound when your head comes out of your ass. So yeah. we're, we're looking to hear that pop. That's what we need. <laughs> when, I, when I hit these units, man, I, I, I heard it real loud. You heard a loud pop. <laughs> I heard a loud pop. <laughs> That's good, son. We're going to be all right. I don't think you're going to be there real long. I think keep me forever. Nah, heck no. Nah, you, you wasn't a bad outlaw. You just dope thing. <laughs> you know what yeah. I like to say? Garden variety drug addict. That's all we are. Yeah, I'm nothing special. Well, we used to like to think we was, though, didn't we? I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have it all right. You're going to get out of there, and I'm still going to be around for a little while. Well, you promised me before I got locked up you wouldn't die while I was locked up. I'm going to uh, hold you to it. I'm damn sure trying my best not to. I'm kind of wanting to go to heaven, but I don't want to go today. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right, son. I'll... I love you, and I'll be talking to you. You be sure and call me the same or tomorrow. All right, I love you too. All right, have a good day. Bye. Bye. I guess I always try to influence his behavior and how he turns out and what he does, but I try to be pretty careful about that because I don't really want to try to dictate to him the way he puts his world together because that's a lot of what I had to deal with from my father. And having never been able to feel like I could satisfy him, I hope not to put that on Michael. Excuse me, ma'am, I just nearly scared you, didn't I? <laughs> Brother, I got this notion you're so much more than that to give. Oh, more than you could ever take, more than you could ever carry alone. Go on and call me an alarmist. I shot and killed the king of thieves. Ran like hell all through the night, thinking all that I had achieved. Come day, break me to work. Someone else had already gone and filled his greedy shoes. Oh, because if you don't play, you do. Thanks for helping. I appreciate it. I love you. We got it done. Love right, you too. We got her. Right. I'll see you in church in the morning. See you about nine, nine morning. thirty. Okay. All right. All right. Go home, get some rest. You're probably gonna need it. Lacey, I think you're the last one to get put up. You get in your cage, everybody be home. Me included. Thank goodness for small favors. At one time, I had a really serious altercation with my father. I was laid up in the bed in the hospital just about to die from a rattlesnake bite. I'd been there about eight days and my dad had begged, pleaded, and threatened that I had to quit. And I told him, I said, okay, dad, you win, I quit. I won't do it again. Within months after getting out of the hospital, I was back at it and my dad came to me. He was living. He said, you told me 
You was going to quit. You lied. I said, Dad, I did not lie. I just changed my mind. I can't quit. It's just, it means too much to me. I got to do it. And after that, I think he understood to a degree. He never agreed, but I think he always understood that I could not do this. I remember my dad telling me one time, he said, you know, son, he said, I really didn't know what you was going to do when you lost that leg. He said, I didn't know if you was going to lay down or you was going to jump up and run. He said, you jumped up and ran. I think that was a veiled compliment. My mother died in 2000. My father died in 2015. The day after my birthday, he died the 21st of December. He was dying on my birthday, but he wouldn't go till the next day. Me and him got along famously in later years. He mellowed. He was a little easier when he got old. And I whipped him a couple of times. He whipped me dozens, but a couple of times in my life after I got grown, I whipped him. I swear I believe it hurt me more to whip him than would he whip me. I think before he passed, he was proud of me. He finally saw me be pretty much a man. Shit, I could cry over Fraggle Rock. Whew, I'm a crier. Or it makes you so lovable. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs>